A little over a month ago, it was announced that Voyager 1 is out of the heliosphere. So that means that it's in interstellar space now, and there was a big hullabaloo over it, and some people got a little bit heated because interstellar space is not the same as outside of the solar system. So I thought that I would talk about what that means exactly. The Sun is a very energetic, active body, right? It's just constantly, constantly letting out tons of plasma and, and really energetic particles. So these particles come off the Sun and they're super hot and they're not really getting together and making anything, so they're not making molecules, things like that. It's a plasma. And so at some point around the Sun there's this bubble of plasma that if you get past that bubble you're no longer in the heliosphere, and Voyager is now outside of the heliosphere. It is now an interstellar plasma. But does that mean the Voyager is outside of the solar system? The short answer is no. The long answer is more complicated. Okay, so the heliosphere is basically, again, it's this plasma, and so we have kind of this cocoon around the sun of plasma, and that plasma is different from the interstellar plasma. We actually see this with other stars. We actually see where there's that line that ends. There's this area where the star is no longer putting out its own plasma, but it's in a larger bubble, so it's in this larger area. You can kind of think about this if you were to blow on your hand and you were in an environment that was, I don't know, really windy. You go outside and you blow on your hand. And at some point, if you pull your hand away from you, you're going to stop feeling your own breath and you're going to start feeling the wind, right? So there's, there's an environment around you that has stuff going on, but there's also you in your environment and there's a point at which, you know, even if we were in a totally still environment, there's a, a point at which you would no longer feel the breath on your hand. It's, it's kind of like that. That's a very, very bad analogy, but it's the only one I could come up with. Plasma is a little bit different. It's the amount of stuff per square space, whether that's centimeter or meter or kilometer. It's the amount of particles, the amount of protons is generally what people talk about. The amount of protons that are in a square centimeter. So when did Voyager reach this interstellar medium? It wasn't any time recently, it was actually last year, so it was in 2012, but we didn't know about it. And the reason we didn't know about it is because Voyager's plasma detector has actually been broken for a really long time. It, it broke before I was born. It broke in the early 80s. So it doesn't have a working plasma sensor. So the Voyager team tried to use the magnetometer. I'm not making that up. That's a totally real thing. To detect magnetic fields, but the, unfortunately the fields lined up too closely so they couldn't detect a difference between the inside of the heliosphere and the outside of the heliosphere. So without the ability to sense the difference between the magnetic fields with the magnetometer and with no working plasma sensor, the Voyager team had to get creative. So what they did was actually there was a CME, which is a coronal mass ejection. A coronal mass ejection is sometimes you see these great pictures of the sun and there's these huge masses of plasma bursts coming off the sun and they actually rip away from the sun and they go out into space. What happened was there was a CME, a coronal mass ejection, came off the sun and it actually got close enough to the Voyager probe that Voyager could pick up those electron oscillations. Okay, so let's have a frank discussion of gas, because this is where the plasma thing gets a little bit confusing, I think, for most people. So if I take in a bunch of air, let it out. How many atoms have I just gone through? Like 20 quintillion atoms. There's a ton. There's like a billion, billion atoms that I just sucked in and let out. And that there's a lot of atoms in your air. Now this depends on where you are and the density of air that you're in, but you know, you're not breathing in billions of atoms at one time. You're breathing in billions times a billion of atoms. Space is really, really sparse. So when you hear astronomers talk about plasma density, just be aware that we're still talking about 
space. And space compared to Earth is really sparse with how many atoms per square centimeter, square meter, etc. So if you look at this graph here put out by JPL, you'll see the density for actual distance from the sun. This graph doesn't start at zero AU, so it's starting most likely hundreds of millions of miles away from the sun. But what is the proton density? Well, it starts out around 0.07 per cubic centimeter. So there are a million cubic centimeters in a cubic meter, so that's about 70,000 protons per cubic meter, right? Starts out strong. Lots of protons, sort of. Again, we're in space. So 70,000 protons per cubic meter sounds like a lot, but it's not. But then we go a ways out, and right before we get to 100 astronomical units, which is about twice as far as Pluto's average distance from the Sun, the density has dropped so drastically, it's gone down to about a thousand protons per cubic meter. You'd need a thousand centimeters just to get one proton. One atom! A thousand centimeters! But then we get a spike over here after Voyager hits the interstellar medium, right? way more particles. In fact, it gets all the way above this 0.12 protons per cubic centimeter, so there really is a jump of a hundred times more particles in the area. In outer space, density goes from about a thousand particles per cubic meter, not centimeter, meter, to a hundred thousand per cubic meter when you go from within the heliosphere to outside the heliosphere. So there's an area where the sun's plasma has gotten thinner and thinner and thinner, and then we hit the interstellar medium. And the interstellar medium actually has a higher plasma density than that edge of the heliosphere. It seems really confusing because it's like, wait, the sun is pushing off tons and tons of plasma and particles all the time, and why wouldn't there be a much higher density around the heliosphere than outside the heliosphere? Well, it's because right next to the sun, like let's say you're living on Mercury, which you should probably not do. Yeah, there's a ton of particles that are coming off the sun and, and bombarding you, but when you get way, way, way out there, you've kind of gotten to the weak sauce part of the heliosphere. So once you pass through that, that last area of the heliosphere, you're going to get to the interstellar medium and plasma is going to be coming from other places, right? So that's when you actually see a rise in plasma. So again, this is space, it's very sparse, but you have this jump of a hundred times more protons from inside the heliosphere, or almost to the edge of the heliosphere, to outside the heliosphere. And that's that's a pretty obvious jump. So that's how the NASA team, they absolutely knew that Voyager was out because, hey, it's not like we went from 170,000 protons to 172,000 protons per cubic meter. It went from 1,000 protons per cubic meter to 100,000 protons per cubic meter. But does that mean that it's outside of the solar system? No, it is not. It is outside of the area of stuff created by the Sun. It's outside of the heliosphere, but it's not outside the gravitational pull of the Sun. So let's talk about the OR cloud. So some comets have, you know, like 70,000 year trajectory, right? They are way out there, They're way past Pluto, way past the Kuiper Belt, they are way past Eris, they are way past Sedna, they are out there. We know that comets have to come from somewhere, and we think that there is this reservoir way, way out there. Now, estimates of where it is, where it starts, where it stops, those estimates do change. They are different. Based on many a comet trajectory and the known laws of mechanics, the OR cloud is predicted to be anywhere between 2,000 astronomical units to 200,000 astronomical units away. An astronomical unit is the distance between the Earth and the Sun, so we are talking thousands to hundreds of thousands of times farther away from the Earth than the Earth is from the Sun. It's like a gajillion miles. It is way, way out there. And so Voyager is, is not anywhere near the OR cloud. It's not going to be near the OR cloud anytime soon. Now, I'm not trying to take away from Voyager's accomplishments. Voyager is way out there. It's like 11, 12 billion miles away and it has done something that nobody really expected it to do, and that is reach the interstellar medium. And it's traveling very fast, traveling about 38,000 miles an hour, and it's exiting the solar system. Now, it hasn't gotten past the OR cloud, 
I don't think that we can honestly say it has exited the solar system, but it is an interstellar plasma, which is weird to think about interstellar space coming before the end of the solar system. I know, it's weird. But that's where we're at with the Voyager 1 Pro. It's cool. It's really, really cool. And everyone at JPL and NASA deserve your undying worship and to be stalked on Twitter. What I'm trying to say is space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Earth Probe Voyager, its continuing mission to explore strange new plasmas, to seek out new magnetic fields and new regions of interstellar space, to boldly go where nothing has gone before.